start in downward facing dog. So make your way to tabletop, press the hands into the mat, push your seat up and up to downward facing dog. Release the neck and make sure that there's strength in the arms and the legs equally. Start to engage your breath, breathing in, breathing out, inhale, exhale, breathing in, and breathing out for five. Walk the feet towards the hands, fold forward over the legs, use a brick or two underneath the hands if you need it. But what I want you to do is have the hands pressing into something. So if it's on the shins, that's fine. If it's on the mat, it's fine. This is an active forward fold. Active Uttanasana. The head is soft, the neck is relaxed. Continue to breathe. Engage in the Ujjayi breath if you have it in your practice. And keep sending your seat away from you. One more breath. Exhale for five. Walk the feet out as wide as your mat and lower your seat down for Malasana Yogi Squat. Have your elbows on the instep, insides of your knees and I want you to start growing tall in the spine as you open the chest and release the shoulders down. Take a breath in and out. Breathing in and out. If this is difficult for you, you can always sit on a block. It's more important that you don't round but open the chest than that you don't have a block underneath your seat. Final breath. Exhale. Lower the seat down to the mat. Come to TP twist. Your knees are bent and you draw yourself tall holding onto the knees, then you wrap the left arm around the knees, right hand comes behind you. Use your fingertips to push yourself to grow taller. Exhale, twisting for one. Inhale. Exhale, twisting for two. Breathing in. Breathing out for three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhaling for five. Inhale, come back to center. Twist to the other side. Press your fingertips into the mat. Exhale, twisting for one. Inhale. Exhale for two. Breathing in. Breathing out for three. Inhale. Exhale for four. One more breath. Exhaling for five. Inhale, come back to center. Extend your left leg out. Take your right leg to the outside of your left knee. Hook your left elbow outside the right knee, place your right hand behind you. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, twist. Breathing in, breathing out. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhaling. Final breath in. Exhaling for five. Inhale back to center. Re-extend both legs. Give them, give them a little shake. And then bend the left knee. Place it on the outside of the right knee. Hook your right elbow outside the left knee. Place your left hand behind you. Inhale, grow tall. And exhale, twist forward. Inhale. Exhale for two. Breathing in. Breathing out for three. Inhale, exhale for four, one more breath, exhaling for five. Inhale back to center, extend both legs, give them a little shake. And then bring the feet hip width distance apart, place your hands next to your hips. The fingertips can point forward or a little bit out. Inhale, open the chest, exhale, press the hands into the ground. Inhale, swing your hips up and forward, coming into reverse tabletop. Keep the hips pressing up. Exhale, breathing in, breathing out. Inhale, 
exhale for three, inhale, exhale for four, the head can start to extend back if that feels nice, otherwise just keep it long, exhale for five, start to lower the seat down, and find a comfortable seat. You can sit on a block, a cushion, or just on the floor, cross-legged or kneeling. So my name is Maggie James and I just wanted to get you into your body first before anything else. One of the things, the tendencies that we have when we are in a state of uncertainty is that we really go into our heads, into all the possible scenarios. We go into risk management, into thinking of all the things that could happen and it really takes us away from being in this body that we have. It takes us away from the present moment we're continuously extrapolating about the future. And the beauty of yoga is that it can bring you back to your body, to the present moment. So the way that yoga does that is it uses the breath and the, uses the movement to create this a bond back to who, who, this body that you have, that you have life in. Um, so, as you've found a comfortable seat for yourself, close the eyes. Take a breath in and out. In and out. With the eyes closed, just reflect back on yourself 10 minutes ago before you started moving. Maybe you felt little um, butterflies, maybe you felt um, all the excuses of why you shouldn't be here, what else you could be doing were maybe going through your head. And then reflect now a minute ago when you sat down from your reverse tabletop, you were probably much more in your body, much more in the moment and kind of like, okay, so what are we doing? much more alert and alive. This is what I aim to support you with in this following practice. Because when we are present with ourselves, we can hear ourselves, we can hear our needs. And when we can hear our own needs, we can have more understanding and more space to listen to others' needs around us as well. Set your practice and intention for this morning. It can be around creating space for your needs so that you can be there in the right place at the right time for others' needs. It can be around sending love and support to those more vulnerable than you. Bring your hands to your heart. We will seal our intentions and open our practice with three rolling arms and Shanti, Shanti, Hari Om all together. Shanti means peace. Hari is the goodness, the love, the divine. And Om is the sound that connects us all through time and space, not even relying on physical presence. And when you chant these um, sacred mantras, I want you to really feel the sense of your vocal cords vibrating and sending these vibrations and waves, sound waves to your whole body. Take a breath in and out. Inhaling for on. Oh, oh. Oh, you're here.
head towards your heart, your inner teacher, humbly accepting its guidance to you. Bring the compassionate and kind self out who is there inside you. And then bring your hands out in front of you. Keep the eyes closed as you saunter from side to side, stretching out the back. Relaxing the head down. Exhale, starting to flutter the eyes open, letting light back into the eyes. And then uncross the legs. Tuck your toes. Push yourself back to down facing dog. Step the feet together. Inhale. Move forward to plank. Exhale, bend the knees. Push yourself back down dog. Inhale, roll forward to plank once more. Exhale, bend the knees, push back down your dog. Bend the knees, move your hips first over to the left. Inhale, come back. Exhale, move the hips down and over to the right, bending the knees more. Inhale, back. Do a couple of movements in your downward dog that feel good. They can be further hip twists or just walking out the hamstrings. Again, finding your way into the present moment through the wonderful aid of your body. And finding stillness in downward dog, breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, roll forward to plank. Exhale, bring the knees to the floor. Lower the chest to almost all the way to the mat. And then inhale, peel your chest off the mat. Little cobra, the lower ribs are still touching. The mat, roll the shoulder blades back and down the spine, engage the legs and the glutes, and make sure that your neck is not jerking your back, but your neck is just an extension of your spine. One more breath. Exhale, lower down, press the hands into the floor, push yourself back to your seat and up to down facing dog. This is your first option for vinyasa, going down on your way to the mat and coming up to a little cobra. Your second option, ripple forward to plank, exhale lower to a half, uh, to a full chaturanga, inhale to upward facing dog, using the glutes, opening the chest and the shoulders as you come up, and exhale rolling over the toes, pushing your seat back and up to down the dog. Inhale, walk the feet towards the hands, lengthen your spine, exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen once more, exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen third time, and exhale, fold, Uttanasana Vinyasa. Inhale, soften the knees, rise all the way up, send the arms up high, interlace your fingers, exhale, side bend to the left. Inhale, back to center, side bend to the right. Inhale, back to center, over to the left. And if you want to deepen the stretch, then take a little curtsy, placing your right foot over to the left. Inhale, back to center, exhale to the other side. Inhale, come back to center, open the heart, and exhale, release the arms by your side. Tadasana at the front of your mat. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhale your intention and exhale your expectations. Inhale, raise the arms up overhead, gaze to thumbs. Exhale, soften the knees, fold over the legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen your spine, step the legs back to plank. Exhale, lower the knees, half chakra. Inhale to upward facing dog and exhale pushing back downward facing dog five breaths. Inhale, exhale for two. Inhale, exhale for three. Keep the arms strong. Exhale four. Inhale, exhale for five. Inhale, step or lightly hop between the hands, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, soft knees rise all the way up, send the arms up high. 
Exhale, fold, Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, lengthen your spine as you prepare. Exhale, step or hop back, move through a flow of your choice, half chaturanga or full. Opening the chest in cobra or up dog, and exhale, down, wood facing dog. Five breaths. Inhale, exhale for two. Inhale, exhale for three. Breathing in, breathing out. Inhale, exhale for five. Inhale, step or hop the feet between the hands, lengthen your spine, and exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up, send the arms up high, gaze to thumbs. Exhale, fold, one last serene muscular A. Use the breath to guide your movements and listen to your body and do what your body needs in terms of bringing the knees down or opening the chest in cobra or upward facing dog. This is your practice and now more than ever it is important that you listen to what your body needs from you. Especially in downward facing dog, this is a moment of rest where you can really think about your breath and hone in on it. You can even close the eyes for a couple of moments here. Final breath of downward dog. Exhale. Inhale, step or hop the feet between the hands, lengthen your spine, exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, Tadasana, arms alongside the body. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhaling with gratitude and exhaling with trust. Inhale, hook your thumbs, raise the arms up and over your head. Arching just the upper back, so don't send your hips forward. Just the upper back. Exhale, fold over the legs, swing the arms behind your back, interlace hands into a fist and press the fist away from your back. Release the hands next to the feet, step the right foot back, lengthen your spine. Exhale, step back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Move forward to plank. Exhale to Chaturanga, half or full. Inhaling to upward facing dog. Use your glutes and exhale pushing back to downward dog. Inhale, move forward to plank. Exhale, bring the knees, chest and chin to the floor. Slide through to Bhujangasana. Cobra, shoulder blades are rolling back and down. Exhale, press through the hands. Seat to the heels, push back downward dog. Inhale, step the right foot between the hands. You can help it with the right hand if you need to. Exhale, step the back foot to meet the front. Fold over the legs. Inhale, hook your thumbs, raise the arms up and over, arch in the back. Exhale, fold over the legs. Swing the arms behind your back and place the fingers one digit over and then press the fist away from your back. Release the hands next to the feet. Step the left foot back. Lengthen your spine. Exhale, step back, downward dog. Inhale, roll forward to plank. Exhale to Chaturanga, half or full. Inhaling to upward facing. And exhaling, downward dog. Inhale, ripple forward to plank. Exhale from the knees, chest and chin to the floor. Slide through, Ujjangasana Cobra. Shoulder blades roll down the back. Exhale, press through the hands. Seat to heels, push back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, look forward, step the left foot in between the hands. Lengthen your spine. Exhale, step the back foot to meet the front. Fold over the legs with the muscle. Inhale, hook your thumbs, raise the arms up and over your head. Arch the upper back. And exhale to Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, deeply bend the knees. Brush the floor with the hands as you rise up. Utkatasana, Chair Pose. Exhale, fold over the legs. Uttanasana. 
Inhale, lengthen your spine and prepare. Exhale, step or hop back. Move through a flow of your choice. I'm demonstrating half chaturanga, little push up and pushing back to downward facing dog. Um, Surinamaskar B, step the right foot between the hands, back heel comes to the floor, raise the arms up, open the chest, warrior one. Exhale, frame the front foot, step back, move through a flow of your choice, and then meet in downward facing dog. You can also always rest between the sides. Step the left foot in between the hands, back heel comes to the floor, rise up, warrior one. Exhale, frame the front foot, step back and move through your flow. It's important to do things mindfully and not just because that's how you do them. On the next inhale, you can do one more, so sorry, a B if you like, or just rest in warrior, in uh, rest in downward facing dog. Or another thing that is always available to you if you want to do it, which I used to do when I was pregnant, is I just used to do the warriors and then not do the flow in between them. So I just switch, I would switch legs. So you've got all these options. This is your practice. And now is the most wonderful time to establish your own home practice. Take five breaths in downward facing dog. And using your ujjayi breath to calm the mind as it calms the whole self, taking your chitta vritti, your anxious worry, your thoughts, leaving them where they can do, where they don't affect you in your life. One more breath. Exhale. Step or hop the feet in between the hands, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, deeply bend the knees, raise the arms up. Utkatasana, chair pose. Exhale, stand tall. Bring the arms through heart center. Press the thumbs into the sternum. Exhale, breathing in. Feeling your heart beating in your chest. Exhale, feeling grateful for that. Inhale, once more, deeply bend the knees, raise the arms up. Utkatasana, chair pose and refine. Breathing in, breathing out, look down towards your big toes. If you can't see them, you need to draw your seat a little bit further back. Inhale, exhale, four, one more breath. Exhale, five, fold over the legs. Exhale. Inhale, lengthen your spine and prepare. Exhale, step forward, jump back, move through your flow. Or if you're feeling tired, go straight to down facing dog. I'm starting to feel a little breathless, which is why I'm going straight to down with dog. I'm listening to myself <laughs> and following on with my body. Step the feet together. On the next inhale, send the right heel high up into the sky. Keep the hips squared. Inhale, feel the length of your body from the heel to the heels of the hands. Now on the next inhale, point the toe, bend the knee, open the hips to the side, split dog. Exhale, inhale, re-extend the leg, then re-square the hips, bring the knee to the nose as you bend it, dome through the shoulders, use your core, then plant the foot in between the hands. Swivel the back heel down, Rise up to warrior one for five breaths. Refine. So bring your hands to your ribs. Feel your front foot pressing forward, the back foot pressing backwards. Make sure your core is engaged, that you're not sticking your bum and your belly out. So you're tucking the tailbone under. And then when you've got the right leg alignment, then rotate just the ribs to face the front of your mat. And then maybe extend the arms up, exhaling for five. Inhale, open arms and hips to warrior two. Breathing in, breathing out. Same principles apply. Front foot is pressing forward, back foot is pressing back, and you're not going into a back bend. Inhale, exhale for four, 
gaze is towards the front middle finger, bend the front knee a little bit more if you can, exhale for five. Inhale, straighten the front knee, exhale, stretch forward, then pivot, bring your front hand to your shin or a block, bring your top hand to your ribs, rotate the lower ribs, the mid ribs, and then the shoulder open, and extend the left arm up and over your head if you want. Breathing in, breathing out. So again, Dikkonasana. What I want you to avoid is going into a back bend just to reach the floor. So I don't want your butt to stick out. It's better to have your hands a little bit higher then. And I also don't want your shoulder to rotate internally just so. So I want you to keep the shoulder open. That's why we open through the ribs first. Inhale, strong legs rise all the way back up. Exhale, rebend your front leg, reverse your warrior. Slide the back hand down, the back leg reach through the top arm. Exhale, one more breath. Exhale for three. Inhale, come back to center. Find extended side angle. Either bring your front forearm onto your thigh or your hand on the inside of the front foot. Inhale. Exhale, starting to spiral the chest open. Breathing in. Breathing out for four. Inhale. Exhale for five. Look down to your front foot. Bring your hands either side of the front foot. Bump the back foot or the front foot a little bit closer together and use blocks either side of your front leg if you need it for Parashwakanasana for pyramid pose. So have the sense that you're sticking your bum a little bit back this time. If you had a tail of feathers like a peacock, you would be opening your peacock feathers now. This is a hamstring stretch for the front leg. So if you need to bend the back knee a bit, or if you need to lift the back heel off, you're welcome to do so. And if you don't have any bricks and this is causing you pain, you can also use a wall to stretch the hamstring. So find creative ways in your home to find a nice hamstring stretch without compromising the lower back. One more breath in pyramid pose. Exhale. Now bring more weight to the front leg. As you start to send the left leg up into the sky, standing splits, your hips are still squared, breathing in, breathing out, maybe starting to hold on to the standing leg. Exhale. For the final breath, you can open the hips as you send the leg a little bit higher. Exhale, step the left foot behind you. Press the hands into the floor to squeeze the right foot off the floor. Squeeze it in and then send it high, three-legged dog. From here, even move through a three-legged flow or a normal flow or rest in downward facing dog. If you want to rest in child's pose, that is also always an option for you. Take a breath in once you're in downward facing dog and exhale. On the next inhale, send the left heel high up. Keep the hips squared. Feel the length of the body from the heels of the hands to the heel of the foot. On the next inhale, point the toes, bend the knees, point the knee to the sky, split dog. Exhale, keep the front body squared. Inhale, re-extend the leg, then draw the knee to your nose. Round the spine, dome the shoulders, and plant the foot in between the hands. Swivel the back heel down, raise the torso, and the arms up to warrior one, and refine. So number one thing to do is make sure that your foundations are right. So press the front foot forward, back foot is pressing backwards. And then make sure that your knees are not locking in, and also that you're not sticking your belly and your bottom out. So tailbone is tucking under. Then you can bring your hands to your ribs, Rotate the ribs forward, feel that stronger stretch in the right hip flex as you do so, and maybe extend the arms up for warrior one. Make sure that you're not collapsing in that back foot. Inhale, open arms and hips now to warrior two. Refine, soften the shoulders, keep pressing the feet away from each other. Exhale, again, core is engaged. Exhale for three, breathing in a little smile, gazing just beyond your front middle finger. Exhale for five. 
Inhale, straighten your front leg. Exhale, stretch forward. You might need to step the back foot in one or two feet. And then pivot, bring your front hand to your shins or a block. Top hand comes to your ribs. Rotate the lower ribs, the mid ribs, and then the shoulders open. Then extend the arm up. Remember that you're kind of in one straight plane. Um, I remember one teacher saying it's as if you were in a toaster. <laughs> I think I try not to think about yoga as rigidly as that. But the idea is basically to not go into a full on back bend or compromise the shoulders. On the next inhale, three strong legs rise all the way up to standing. Exhale, reach on the front knee, stretch forward and reverse your warrior. Inhale. Exhale, reaching through the left arm, bending through the left knee a little bit more. One more breath. Exhale, come back, warrior two. Extended side angle stretch, bring your front forearm onto your thigh, or maybe your hand on the instep of your front foot. Top hand again opens the head. Uh, ribs open and then extends up and out your head. Breathing in, breathing out. So you feel, should feel a very strong stretch on the inner thigh on the left leg. Breathing in, breathing out. Final breath. Exhale. Gaze down to your front foot. Bring your hands either side of your front leg and then bring your legs a little bit closer to one another. Full partial Kalasana, Pyramid Pose. Again, use bricks either side of your front leg and try not to have the stretch in the lower back. That would be quite painful as well, probably. So make any adjustments with the back leg that you need in order to have a long spine extending over your left leg. So again, you can bend the back knee, have the heel come off, you can use a wall in front of you. Whatever you need to do to make this a worthwhile stretch instead of just torture. Final breath. Exhale. Start to bring more weight to the front left leg. And then loading it, start to lift the right leg off the floor coming into standing splits. Draw yourself closer to the left leg. Maybe even grab the foot and hold onto your calf or your ankle. Breathing in, breathing out for three, inhale, exhale for four. On the next inhale, open the hips, send that leg a little bit higher, and exhale, step it back to low lunge. Press your hands into the floor. Use your core to lift the left leg off the floor. Squeeze it there for a moment and then send it back to three-legged dog. Either move through three-legged flow, normal flow, or rest. Catching your breath, catching yourself back to your present moment, and everyone meeting in downward facing dog. Release the neck, take a breath in, and exhale, flutter the lips out. One more time. We store a lot of emotion and a lot of um, tension, therefore, in our face. So just flubbering the lips out once a day can really help to loosen the muscles around the skull, helping you to avoid things like headaches or frowns or wrinkles even. On the next inhale, step or hop the feet in between the hands, lengthen your spine, and exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, deeply bend the knees, raise the arms up with Katasana chair pose. And exhale, stand tall. Tadasana. Breathing in. And out. Inhaling. And exhaling. Thank you. Okay, deeply bend the knees. Raise the arms up. Utkatasana chair pose. Tip toe descent. Come onto the balls of the feet. Balancing. If you need to bring the heels back down, it's no problem. Find a way to balance on your tiptoes and then start to descend all the way down with as much control as you can muster. Um, I was reading a study that um, using your uh, big muscles like your quads and your glutes um, 
like to a higher degree actually increases the body's oxygen and um, general oxygen use and that actually helps the respiratory organs be stronger and more effective and more able to cope with respiratory uh, diseases as well so everything we're doing is really good for our whole bodies including these kind of squats and descents finding bakasana or kakasana crow or crane pose so feet are together the knees are wide and your hands are on the instep, uh, the hands are on the floor in front of you. You can um, do your own Bakasana Kakasana practice or for um, or um, baby crow even if you like. If you're new to all of this then what I want you to do is bring your hands to the floor and then start to lift your seat up. Then you're using your upper arms as little shelves to place your shin bones on. You're tipping forward and looking in front of you one or two feet. It's very important to look forward. Then you can lift one foot off the floor and place it back down and then lift the other foot and place it back down. Either only practice this or once you feel comfortable with lifting one foot off at a time, then you can lift one foot off and then the other and just play around with this. The next stage will be to play around with the seesaw effect of going a bit forward and back a little bit forward and back. This will give you the control to then come eventually all the way into a tripod where you can then move onto tripod headstand if you want to. And coming back up with control, slowly coming back up. Very nice. Okay, press and extend your legs, moving into a forward fold, lengthen your spine and then take your peace fingers, have the feet about hip width distance apart, and wrap those peace fingers around the thumb, the big toes, the thumbs coming to the tip of your big toe. Inhale, draw yourself tall, long, the spine long, and exhale, fold, bending the elbows out to the side, using that to draw yourself a little bit closer. Again, this is a strong hamstring stretch, if you are a runner or a cyclist and you have really, really tight hamstrings and this is excruciating for you, use a wall. So imagine I've got a wall here and you're just trying to keep a long back and as long as you're feeling the stretch of the hamstrings, you're doing the right thing. One more breath here and exhale. Inhale, come out of the pose for a moment, bring your hands to your shins. And exhale, go a little bit deeper. You can bring your hands underneath your feet, palms facing up. We'll find a way to make it deeper. If you're very flexible, you might want to come onto bricks and then place your hands a little bit lower so that your feet would be on bricks. I am not that flexible, so I'm staying here. What I want you to be mindful of is that there's no pulling in the lower back. If there's pulling in the lower back, then come a little bit further out of the pose because uh, pulling in the lower back is not a good thing and it's not something that we want to um, encourage in yoga at all. Final breath. And exhale. Inhale, bring the hands to the shins, lengthen the spine. Exhale, bend the knees deeply, raise the arms up, chair pose. Inhale, stand up tall. Exhale, hands come through prayer. Tadasana. Again, breathe in. Remind yourself of your intention. And exhale, release it out. Okay. Find your feet, um, bring your feet together. And then draw the left knee in towards your chest. Left knee, yeah. Squeeze it in towards you. Breathe in. And breathe out. Now make sure that your hips are square, that you don't have a knee out to the side. And then bring your hands underneath your thigh. Extend the left leg out in front of you. If you can't, just extend it as much as you can. This is again a very strong exercise. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, maybe raising the arms out to the side. Exhale, one more breath. The higher you raise your leg, the harder it is. Exhale. Inhale, bend the knee, start to take your weight forward as you extend to warrior three. Extend the left leg out behind you, breathing in and breathing out. Now bend the left knee, 
have the palm facing the ceiling and then take little taps upwards. So this is a strong glute exercise. Exhale, breathing in. If you're starting to lose your balance or need any support, you can have your hands against the wall. Find the little taps upwards with that left foot. Exhale, inhale, bring the hands to the floor. Open through the hips to an open hip. Next, standing splits. And exhale, bend your knees all together. Lower yourself almost all the way to the mat and then re-extend, inhale. Exhale, bend the knees, bring knee to knee, lower, knee down the calf. Inhale, re-extend. One last time, bring knee to knee, and then lower the back knee, down the front legs, half, all the way to a seated pose. Half seated twist. You might want to sit in a block for this if you want to help the hips tilt a little bit forward. Um, actually, this block is even better. So you might just want to use a cushion if you're at home, or if you've got these nice blocks, you can use the nice blocks. Make sure your spine is tall, hook your uh, left elbow outside the right knee, place the right hand behind you, inhale, grow tall, and exhale, twist for one. Breathing in, breathing out, inhale, exhale for three, Inhale, and exhale four deep inhale the twist. This is the third variation of this twist that we're doing today, so we can go a little bit deeper for five. Okay, before you come back to center, we will try a little twisted flying, a, twist, a twisted uh, side curve here. So, with the same elbow hook that you have from the twist, you just come forward, bring your hands to the floor lift your seat up the mat. You can do this on bricks as well if uh, you need a little bit more support if you're starting out. If you have uh, no bricks, you can just try it on the mat. So you're bringing your left knee, sorry, right knee on top of the left arm, left elbow, and you're placing the right hip onto the right elbow. You're lifting your seat up, lowering the torso, bringing your face almost to the floor and then you can extend the top leg if you want to. Coming slowly back down. This is a slightly more advanced pro but it's just a fun little thing to play with. From here either you can um, shoot yourself back to Chaturanga. I can't demonstrate that yet uh, but I'm working on it. Or just from seated twist um, come and make your way to a seated pose. We'll practice fire log. All right, so, uh, yes. Uh, for fire log, your right leg is on top of the left, and you're bringing your shin bones parallel. And what I want you to think about is try not to bring too much bend into the ankle because the ankle is a joint and it's not that stable. So it's held together by ligaments and tendons. You want the stability to come from your shin bones. Again, if you want to sit on a brick, that might be helpful sitting on a cushion at home maybe, and placing cushions maybe underneath your uh, knees and your ankle. Use whatever support uh, that makes this pose more enjoyable and less torturous. <laughs> Again, the value of this pose is opening in the hips and also stretching the glutes. So either bring your hands behind you and keep opening the chest, or you can bring your forearms onto your knee and your ankle, or you can bring your hands out in front of you folding forward. This is quite a strong pose. If it's just really not working for you, then the alternative is to have the, uh, to do figure of four pose so you have the right uh, shin bone across the left uh, leg and you have your hands behind you, you're flexing both feet back towards you and opening through the chest. And one more breath. And exhale. Fantastic. So from here, wherever you are, I want you to uh, your right 
Le leg is parallel to the front of your mat. And I want you to shoot your left leg behind you, coming into pigeon pose. Come onto the fingertips, lengthen your spine, gaze to your back foot, make sure it's not sickling in, but that it is straight. That'll be an indication of how your knee is pointing. And then when you're ready, you can lower your forearms down, coming into a pigeon if you need a block or a cushion underneath your hips to keep them from going a little bit over to one side or the other. And feel free to use these bricks underneath you. I'm demonstrating with two bricks. You can create a little pillow with the help of your forearms. Breathing in and out. Inhale. Exhale. Breathing in. Breathing out. Starting to bring the weight back into the hands. Walk the hands back towards you, lengthen through the spine. Tuck the back toes under, bring your hands to the floor. And then squeeze your right knee off the mat, send it back high into the sky. Either move through three-legged uh, flow, normal flow, or rest in downward facing dog. Take a breath in. Downward facing dog, step them up the feet to the front of your mat, lengthen your spine, exhale, fold. Inhale, deeply bend the knees, raise the arms up, chair, exhale, stand tall, arms alongside the body, breathe in and breathe out. Inhale and exhale. Standing tall, now draw the right knee in towards your chest. Give it a little hug, breathe in and breathe out. Bring your hands underneath your thigh, keep the chest open as you start to extend the leg. Inhale, exhale, breathing in, breathing out. The higher you can lift the leg, the stronger the pose. Maybe extending the arms up as well. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, bend the knees, start to tip the chest forward as you move through to warrior three. Inhale, exhale, bend the top leg and then take little taps up, little pulses, using your glutes, your stabilizers, feeling the arch of the foot active as it tries to stabilize the foot. One more breath, exhale. Bring your hands down to the floor. Second round of standing splits. Extend the left leg up, opening the hips. Exhale, bend the knee, draw the knees together and lower the knee towards the floor, but not quite down yet. Inhale, re-extend the left leg, standing splits. Exhale, bend knee to knee, lower. Inhale, one final time, extend the leg and exhale, bend the knees, knee to knee and lower all the way down, half seated twist. Inhale, go tall in the spine. Use any blocks that you used the first time around. And exhale, hook the right elbow outside the left knee. Left hand comes behind you, inhale. Exhale, twist. Breathing, breathing out. Inhale, exhale for three. Inhale, exhaling for five, oh, four. One final breath, exhale for five. Okay, before you de-rotate, take your um, twisted side crow. So, lifting your seat off the floor, creating yourself some space. Again, you can use bricks, and then if the hands will demonstrate with bricks so that you can see that version as well. So, you're hooking your right elbow underneath your um, left knee and the left hip is going onto the left thigh, the uh, left hip, the uh, left elbow, sorry. And then you can start to extend the top leg 
and move through any variation that you want. Otherwise, making your way to a um, fiber pose. So again, figure of four pose is the alternative if fire lock is too excruciating for you and doesn't help you. So you've got your right, sorry, your left leg across the right thigh, hands behind you, open the chest, or you have the shins parallel to the front of your mat, hands either behind you, use any bricks as scaffolding, and try not to bend into the ankle. So the ankle should be firmly on top of the bone, preferably bone on bone, rather than joint and ligaments. And then maybe using your forearms to press them down, or walking your hands out in front of you. This is where my flexibility ends for my person, for my body, but everyone is different. got your left leg to the front of the, uh, at the front of the mat parallel and you're sending your right leg behind you. Try to have the shin parallel but if it doesn't then you can bring it a little bit further underneath you. Gaze towards your back foot, make sure that the foot is not sickling in but pointing directly back. On the fingertips open your chest and exhale, move into pigeon. Breathing in, exhale, releasing with every exhale a little bit further down. Use any bricks underneath your seat or cushions to make sure that you're not sliding to one side or the other. Slide through to Bhujangasana Cobra and exhale, come to lying down on your mat. Make a little pillow with your forearms and wiggle your hips from side to side. Breathing in and out. Bring your hands behind your neck, behind your head. Extend the elbows out to the side. Engage your legs, lift the chest up. Shalabhasana variation. In a way, I find this more helpful because I feel my back muscles really working hard along the whole of my back. Whereas sometimes when I bring my hands behind me and open the chest, I kind of feel that it's more just my lower back muscles working. So try it out for yourself. But I find this, this variation of Shalabhasana way harder than this variation. So it's up to you. One more breath. In lowest pose, exhale, come all the way down. Wiggle your hips from side to side, bring the opposite cheek to the mat. And exhale. Either do another variation of Shalabhasana, it can be arms and elbows up and then rotating from side to side. That's a very strong pose. Or traditionally, you can do Danyanasana, bending the knees, grabbing a hold of the ankles, and then kicking the feet into the hands to start to open the chest. I find this pose quite hard, but not as strong sometimes on the back muscles. It's quite strong on the quads for me because you're using your feet to kick up. So sometimes I find further variations of Shalabhasana actually more helpful to work on my posture for myself. Final breath. 
and exhale, release all the way down from Bhagavasana. Wiggle your hips once more, coming into your third back bend here. So either again take a variation of Dhanurasana, you can bring your hands on the inside of your ankles, thumbs pointing up as if you were doing a thumbs up. Or if that's not really helpful for you, it's not really helpful for me, you can do the same variation. But like I said, this Shalabhasana variation, lifting the elbows as high as you can and then twisting to one side and then the other, really working the serratus and the muscles along the sides of your back and the sides. One more breath and exhale, coming back down wherever you were. Bring your hands alongside the body, wiggle your hips from side to side. Breathe in and out. Inhale and exhale. Rolling onto your backs. Bend the knees, have the soles of the feet on the floor, have the feet hip width distance apart. Press the feet into the floor to lift your hips off the mat, point the knees, draw the knees forward, and then from bridge extend the arms up and over your head, stretching the front body. Breathing in, breathing out, inhale, exhale. Keep drawing the knees forward to lift the hips up. Exhale. Final breath. And exhale, coming all the way back down. For the next three sets, we will do further back bending. If you have wheel in your practice, you're welcome to do three sets of wheel now. If you would like to explore other options, like different variations of bridge, um, I will talk you through some options now. So to, if you're doing uh, wheels, just come up into your wheels as long as you feel warmed up enough. For a nice restorative back bend, I like to use a brick underneath my sacrum. If you don't have bricks, you can use maybe like a big bolster or a cushion on its side and you can take it in its highest setting, medium setting or the lowest setting. You can also extend the legs, probably more in the lower settings if that feels nice, just lifting the hips a little bit. So these are restorative options. If you are working towards wheel, I've got a few things to say about that. So wheel is a very strong pose and um, it is not for everyone. Uh, some many people really love it, but if you just find that it's not doing much for you, don't feel any pressure to do it because it also has a lot of dangers that come with it, especially for the lower back, which is the bendiest part. So if you're not, if you don't have that much opening in other parts of your back, um, then you'll dump all of it into the lower back and you can overdo it. If you do want to work on your wheel though, the best advice I've got is do a wheel every day. So if you start doing it every day, then um, it will really progress your wheel progression. And um, just make sure that you're warmed up because like I said, it's a very deep back bend. That's why we've done at least four back bends now before we are starting to do wheel. Um, the other thing you can do is place bricks against a wall and place your hands on the bricks. Um, I can't really show this right here because if I place my bricks here, they will likely slide. But if you place them against a wall and then you place your hands, your head in between the bricks and then the hands on the bricks, that's a very nice way of easing the, the tension on the wrists. It makes the bridge a little bit easier. Also, if you're just working towards bridge first, you can rest on your head, just so to start to use these muscles to lift up. Okay. I think everyone should be done with their three um, deeper back bends now. So stay lying on the mat. Have the knees bent and windscreen wipe them from side to side. Bring your knees into the chest. Take a couple of circles with your knees in both directions. 
And then to close our physical practice, we will move through a inversion. If you are practicing in a restorative inversion, then bring a nice cushion um, or a bolster underneath your lower, uh, underneath your uh, sacrum, and then maybe come against the wall and extend your legs up on a wall. If you've got a couch in your room, you can even just have the legs on the couch or on a chair. This is a really nice way to relax and release the back, but also do an inversion at the same time. If you'd like to practice headstand or handstand, anything that you're working on, you can do that now. Be mindful that we are winding down the practice, so um, just be mindful of your energy. If you'd like to do a shoulder stand, then you're going to send your legs behind your head, have the knees bent at first as you arrange your arms and your hands to support your back. Then slowly you can extend the knees to the sky, so don't just extend the legs, but point the knees to the sky. Once you've got a long line between your hips and your knees, then you can extend your legs up as well. Staying here for 10 breaths. One of the things that uh, is always a bit challenging is not to fidget when you're in a shoulder stand or any kind of inversion. Sometimes the urge to fidget is really high and it's just something to think about because it's a lot like meditation. The pose is a little bit uncomfortable maybe, so you just want to move to not have to sit with that discomfort. And one of the things that you practice in meditation is sitting with slight discomfort. So I invite you to uh, try and observe your mind and its need to fidget, but not identify with them, not go down that train of that path. And one more breath. And exhale, we bend the knees, bring the knees towards the forehead. If you want to extend the legs and that feels nice for you, you can. Otherwise, just stay here. And using the arms as brakes, slowly release all the way down to the mat. Extending the legs. And then bring the full fish pose. Either bring the hands and sit on them if you're new to fish. Otherwise, bring your hands alongside your body. Press your forearms into the mat, pump up your chest and lift yourself high onto the top of the head. Taking three lion's breaths, inhaling. Exhale, stick out the tongue. Breathing in. towards your chest when you're ready. Rock a few times from side to side and then let the knees fall out over to the left. Extend the right arm to the right, maybe place your left hand on your knees. Have the face roll towards the right. Close the eyes. Try to keep the knees in towards the navel rather than down because the twist should be coming from the part of the back that uh, this is enabling if possible. And now come back to centre, draw the knees in once more. Place the hip a little bit closer to the left of your mat and lower your knees to the right, extending the left arm out to the left, the gaze to the left, maybe closing the eyes. Use any bricks underneath your knees if um, you're finding twisting quite hard. You can have cushions or pillows between the knees as well, just like I'm using blocks. Again, I invite you to keep the eyes closed as we're moving our way towards Shavasana, towards our final relaxation. Way back 
back to the center of your mat. And draw the knees in once more. Give yourself a hug. And then release the feet to the corners of the mat. Extend the arms alongside your body. Let the feet fall out to the sides. Maybe walk the shoulder blades underneath you so your chest can stay open. Palms face to the sky. Take a breath in. And out. Once more, maybe using an audible sigh on the exhale. Ah, one final time. Ah, feeling the whole body heavy on the mat, supported by the ground underneath you. Feeling the energy, your blood, your oxygen flowing through to all parts of your body. Vital life force, healing it, restoring it. Feel the muscles relax and release from your bones. They don't have to move them around anymore. Feel the muscles around the skull relax and release. The forehead, the skin smooth out. Cheeks soften. The jaw has no tension and is relaxed, released. The throat is soft. The shoulders are relaxed. The chest and the belly are able to breathe freely, rising up and down. The hips are heavy, the legs are heavy, the feet are relaxed, the hands, the fingers, the wrists, the elbows and the arms all relaxed. Your whole body is heavy, soft and relaxed. space when we feel uncertain, when we feel unsafe, when there is instability in our life? How can we create more space and more grounding so that we can feel everything that needs to be felt and experienced? Paying attention to your breath, your movement, this will help anchor and calm your mind. It allows you to get used to being in your body once more. It allows us to leave our heads. Sometimes our head leads our entire day, leads our life. But when we practice this, it allows us time to come back to our bodies and come back home. Come back home to the present moment. And it reawakens the feelings of um, resilience of strength, enough to experience everything that we are experiencing. Starting to deepen the breath. Either stay in Shavasana as you are, or if you want to come out and start to move your fingers, Move your toes, extend your arms up and over your head to give yourself a nice stretch from fingertips to tiptoes. And draw the knees into the chest and roll over to the right side in the feeting position. And then using your arms help to push yourself up to a comfortable seated position with your eyes still closed. Bring your hands to your heart. And bow your head to your heart, your inner teacher, and all the teachers who came before that. 
Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. And may the thoughts, actions, and words of my own life contribute to that happiness and to that freedom in some way. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Have a beautiful day and take this kindness and sense of peace and serenity uh, with you wherever you go.